get started again. Uh, we'll talk about the machine attachment configurations again. Uh, specifically, we'll talk about swapping the bucket kind of at the end. We'll, we'll just do a, we won't have everybody do it, but we'll talk about where the button is, what you have to do, and, and run through it that way. Um, effectively, efficiently operate the wheel loader and following skill sets. This is some of the things we'll, we'll hit on what you use a wheel, wheel loader for. Um, you may do truck loading, load and carry, uh, I think forks or material handling somewhere on there, but a lot of stuff we're, we're not going to be doing, doing hopper loading, screening, backfilling, lane clearing, towing, stockpile management, a lot of the stuff we'll, we'll skip through here, but hit on the, the, the forks, general operation of it. Uh, go ahead and hit the next one, sir. Stop it when you see one that we need to talk about. And again, this, this has a lot of information in it. Uh, it it's a full blown course from the Etsy Brothers, uh, but it's, we, we skipped through quite a bit of it. And hit what's pertinent to you. We're, we're not missing out on, I mean, we're missing on some good information, but it, I could teach it to you and you'd never <laughs> use it here. Load and carry. So load and carry, and this, this goes with a lot of different things, whether you're using forks or you're using a bucket. Uh, make sure you, you have the optimal height, you maintain safe speed, you got a good load retention without spillage, ride control for quip, proper gear selection for task addition. So a lot of things here you can carry into using the forks, you can use for the bucket. Do y'all use the bucket that often to move material around? You do? Okay. All right. Get to the next one. I think there may be a video. So go ahead and hit play on the video, and I'll talk about some of the things you're looking for. Um, when you're watching him carry it, you can see you can see him up there in the cab, and he's, he's got the bucket far enough off the ground. He's not going to hit anything. Of course, on this site, there's there's a variety of different factors as far as the ground and different piles of things. Um, but keeping it at an optimal height where he can see, and he's not going to impact anything. Another good reason to keep it low is if you got it up high and you're driving through here and somebody darts out in front of you or a car or an animal or something, hit the brakes and see what happens. That's a front forward truck. <laughs> so that's why you, you do keep it. it low as possible. That way if you do have to stop real quick, you ain't going to worry about the tractor flipping on you. So, just because you got forks on the front doesn't mean you can lift up the world with it. You, you got to make sure you're, you're still within the capacities and capabilities of the the machine. Um, make sure the attachment securely fastened to the machine. We'll talk about that when we go through the swapping the bucket supports. Uh, maintains proper load height for task, uh, loading and lifting. Maintains safe speed for task site conditions. Use ride control. Um, one, one of the biggest things when you're picking something up you want to be straight in line with whatever you're picking up each and every time it might not work every time but depends what you're lifting you want all the weight in, in, in the back right behind you because that big bumper on the back is a big heavy counterweight it offsets the load you have in the front if you get the thing machine turned all the way one side your counterweight's not directly behind you it's actually over here so anytime we walk up and pick something up, if I try to pick this table up, I'm picking it up right here. I'm not trying to pick it up at the side. That's going to twist something in my back. Kind of the same concept on the loader. 
the load's not going to be evenly distributed front to back. It's going to, when you lift up on something, depending if it's heavy, it's going to start moving the machine over to that side with the counterweight. You could eventually tip, tip the machine, spill your load, uh, anything like that could, could quite, quite happen. <coughs> I think we got a video. No, keep going. See here. Uh, minimize machine movement while load is elevated. You know, at times you're going to have to have maybe if you're loading something up to a to a higher deck or uh, moving it up to set on some racks, you, you may have to have it up there very high in the air. But make sure you get all your maneuvering and positioning done back here before you so you can pull straight up to whatever you need to do. Don't make those moves at the last minute or try to get the, the corner in there and just you know, have it turned all the way, get it lined right up. Get all your turning and everything done back here before you go up to what you need to do, whether it's loading or unloading a truck or moving a dumpster. Uh, <clears throat> make sure your tire pressure is the same. So if I got a low tire on this side and a full inflated tire on this side, what's going to happen when I lift something up? I'm going to go like this. The load could shift, you could flip the machine, spill the load, and anything's possible. This is a uh, video of uh, swapping the forks around to a bucket. Now, I'll, I'll tell you some of the things that they do on here and why they do it. <laughs> so again, e each machine is different on, on where and how it disconnects, and we'll talk about sp the specificity of the machine out there here shortly. But he's, whoever it is in the cab has disconnected the, the forks. And drive over and get a bucket. So he pulls it up, he's, he's operating in the cab to do the quick coupler and to push it down. And what do you do right there? Make sure it was caught and make sure it's, make sure it's on there. So you, you want to do that right there in a controlled environment on the ground instead of hooking his pallet forks up and going to dump a dumpster and the forks in the dumpster go off and all together, right? Yeah. So has that ever happened here? Happened to me. <laughs> happened to you. Okay. <laughs> All right, so you got to go fishing and get those things out and all that. It's a whole yes. whole mess of stuff. So make sure you know when you do that, you do that little test, push down on it. That's going to let you know that hey, the, the bucket's securely attached. We're putting you know, thousands of pounds down on it by lifting the machine up. And if something wasn't right, wasn't properly attached at that point, that's when it would should fail. Should fail at that point. So just just wrapping everything up. We'll. Uh, if someone wants to go ahead and grab the wheel loader, um, or if it's already in a place where we can use it, great. Uh, grab some pallets, grab the extra bucket and forks and tote them over there. Any, couldn't find any pallets the other day. All we did was we took one of those hoppers out and just moved it from one Yeah, that's fine. We can do the hopper. Yeah, that'll yeah, work. I didn't, I didn't see any pallets down there. We'll use the hopper. That'll work. I'll, I'll use those more than pallets, probably. And then uh, <coughs> we'll walk around out there and Go from there. Any questions before we step out of here, anybody? Yeah, one question. All right, yes, sir. I need to hear about banging up, blowing a horn first. I just want to, is that it? Whatever the site requirements are here, so whatever whatever you have to do, I, I think it's a good thing to let you know. Um, anybody around you know that the, the machine, hey, something's about to happen with this machine, they look and they can move. Uh, I'll tell you a story about one of our contractors we use quite often. They had an incident where they were working on the road. The guy was sitting there eating his lunch. The guy hops on the track hoe, backs it up, backs over him. Killed the guy. So I, don't, I don't know what happened on that as far as leading up to it, but the guy was sitting there at the machine. I don't know if the machine was running. The guy just hopped on it, backed it up to keep going, and boom, it ran him over. And they, the operator didn't know he ran him over to, to quite run into it. So the guy was under the track for a little bit. Backed it up and backed it up, and someone's seen it happen. So. And uh, again, these, these wheel loaders will, you know, weigh 20,000 pounds easily. So you, you run over some, somebody, it's just more likely going to kill them. It's, I mean, it's, it's that serious. 
So keep that in mind. But yeah, absolutely. Whatever requirements are here on site, I mean, if that's something you want to go, if it's not a requirement, you want to go above and beyond that to, to do that, great. Uh, but we'll follow whatever site rules are for your facility. Any other questions? I'd say if the backup alarm's working properly, and that one is, that's what that the whole that's what the whole thing that backup alarm is designed for is let people aware that you're backing up. <coughs> yeah. But like I say, if you're in an area where you might have traffic coming through or something like that, I would. Yeah, feel feel better. Ain't gonna hurt it. Yeah. Any other questions? I guess we'll uh, meet out at the wheel loader.